Hey, how are you, Cynthia? Hey, Teresa, how are you? DJ, DJ in the building. How are you, sister? We're not going to be on long today. Um, hey, uh, Dr. A is teaching for the um, I Need a Word Summit. And so um, I just wanted to get on and give you guys a quick prayer and prophetic word. Um, and then I'm going to go over there and listen to her teach. Um, um, okay. Okay. Economics, boo. I see you. Hey, Chastity, Chastity. Hey, Cherie. So we're not going to be on super long. We're going to be, um, in Psalms 32. Good evening, birthday girl. Good evening. Are you going to be on tomorrow? Cause I want to pray for your birthday, but today I don't want to rush through it. I don't want to rush through it. So is that okay? Good evening. Good evening, Jay Watkins. Can you put in your uh, full name so we can say what's up to you? Um, hello, woman of gold, woman of gold. So yeah, um, today, I hope you guys, I don't know if you guys, did I talk about the I Need a Word Summit? I think I did. I did. I did. Well, tonight, um, hey, Mama Joyce, Dr. A is teaching on the prophetic. And so it starts at 7 p.m. And so we want to make sure that we get to go over there. I love to hear her teach. I do. So, but it's going to be all week long. It's going to be amazing. Um, there's going to be um, teaching on relationship. There's going to be teaching on um, like supernatural um, wealth creation and budgeting and stuff like that. And then there's going to be um, dreams and interpretation of dreams. And then there's going to be on Thursday, I'll be doing prayer. So, you know, we talk about prayer here all the time. So, you know, but if you want to see the other days, like sign up, it's absolutely free. Um, there's no cost for it. So uh, if you didn't know about it, sign up. Yep. 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 So we're not going to be on long. So we're going to be in Psalms uh, 32 verse one, Psalms 32 verse one. Let me know when you get there, get your pen and your paper. Um, we are going to pray through this a little bit and I just want to release a word. Hey, Miss Shana, how are you doing? Yep. I just wanted to release a, something to think about this week. Hello, woman of gold. How are you? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So let me know when you get there. Psalms 32 verse one. I put this up over the weekend. Um, there's, we have kind of a lot of word kind of swirling around, but I just wanted to hit this kind of real hard. Hey, Shaletta, how are you doing? Woman of God. Um, I just kind of wanted to hit this real quick and I wanted to, this is a foundation piece. A lot of times when people even read it, you may just kind of gloss over it. Take it, take it, take it, take it, take it in the building. Yes. Um, I didn't call you. Oh Lord Jesus, it's a fire. All right. So, um, okay. Good to see you, Miss Patty Ann. Hey man of God, how are you doing? Enjoyed your teaching on tithing the other day. That was beautiful. We're going to be in Psalms 32 verse one. Um, when we talk about good, good. So get your pen and paper because we get ready to get started. Y'all ready? Let's go. All right. If it seems like I'm rushing, it is that I'm rushing a little bit. Um, and I don't want to, I don't want to feel like you guys, I don't want you guys to feel like you guys are rushed. So, okay. So the enemy is going to always attack you in the place of your revelation, period, point blank. But God is always going to push you to another level of revelation. The enemy is always going to attack you in the place of your revelation, right? But God is always pushing you to the next level of revelation, which is identity. Come on, guys, in him, right? And so when we talk about Psalms 32, verse 1, I'm getting ready to read this over you. But this is a piece. This is an armor piece to your identity. This is an armor piece to your identity. I pray y'all are, are y'all with me. Okay. So when Jesus fasted for 40 days, then Satan came, Hey, how are you? Then Satan came and tempted him. Not before the fasting, not during the fasting. It was after the fasting. And he dealt with pushing Christ, uh, challenging Christ about his identity. And so if we see that happening, that's huge in how we function, how we flow in the revelation of the father and the revelation of the kingdom and how we function in the father and how we function in the kingdom, right? Identity is very foundation, foundational, very foundational. And so if the enemy can get us tripped up 
with identity, if the enemy can get us grappling with identity, right? If, if I'm not sure of, of my full identity, if I'm not convinced all the time, no matter how I'm acting, no matter what I'm doing, right? When your kids act some kind of way, your kids are still your kids. They're still your kids. And so even when they're doing shenanigans, they're still your kids. You're still responsible for them, right? You still show up. Now you may chastise them. You may get on them. You may take things away from them, but you never deny them. You never deny them. You never deny that this is not my child. And so it is with God. But what happens is we sometimes we pull back and we act as if our, um, it does. The brain has case new features that require the latest app version. Okay. Yeah, I, we we have. <laughs> yes, we we I we can do new things on the on the broadcast, guys. Praise the Lord. Anyways, so I know, but it's true. Regardless if it's a troll, I can bring people on the broadcast now. Just your voice, but you can come on the broadcast with me. So yay, we're gonna do that anyway. Um, so, but what happens is if the enemy can challenge you in pulling back, then what's ha what God is pushing you to and what God is pushing you through, right? So what will happen is the enemy will try to hold you in this place that God is pushing, pushing you through because once you conquer the through place, you're getting to a two place, which is a deeper dimension of God. God is not going to relent. God is not going to stop requiring that you get to the promised land. God's not going to bend his rule and his reign because you are grappling. I'm grappling with the enemy in the place of identity. Come here, children of Israel. They grappled with identity. They grappled with the identity of God. Therefore, they were grappling with the identity of themselves. And that first generation in the wilderness Oh, hey, sister, they could not get over not being a slave, right? Right? Not being a slave. They couldn't get through it. They couldn't get over it. And so because they could not identify with the, themselves not being a slave, they made God still the God of their slavery. I pray y'all see this, right? They, come on, Joseph, they saw God as the God of their slavery, not the God of their promised land. There's a big difference. There's a big difference. And so if God, if the enemy can entrap our mind, he can entrap your mouth. And when your mouth and your mind is entrapped, the man is entrapped. And so you will be going around and around in a place that God has said, you're not to settle here. This is a place I'm pushing you through so that you can come to a deeper dimension of my expectation concerning your life. Hallelujah. And so the prophetic word, um, if, if you will, because I, I went around the long way of the mountain, super foundation, super foundational, right? God is not going to relent about the expectation of what you should be saying, what you should be decreeing, and what you should be walking out in this season. God is not, the expectation does not lift off of your life. The expectation of what your the, the place of your revelation, come on, is not going to move off of your life. Hey, man of God, it's not. It's not going to move off of your life. And so what will happen is the enemy will come and he'll try to tether you to this realm of revelation while God is pulling you to this realm of revelation. And, and he's, he's he, here's the thing. So it's this tug of war, right? This is tug of war. And I can shake his grip. I can shake him off if I say it is written. Right? I don't have anything to say to you. Come here, Jesus. I didn't have, I don't have anything to say to you. I have nothing to give you. I have no revelation. Even though I am the word, I'm going to give you the word. I need y'all to catch that. Here is Jesus. He is in the wilderness after he fasted. 40 days and 40 nights, the enemy comes to try his identity. He is the word. Come on, guys. He is the word, but the word says, I, I have no word for you. Let me give you it is written. Shake it off. I 
am not going to engage with you with my words. I'm going to give you the word that gives me my identity. It is written. So you want to challenge my identity. Let me give you my identity. It is written. Let me shake you off. It is written. <laughs> Hallelujah. It is written. Jesus, I pray I'll see this. I pray I'll see this, right? And so, so it is with us. You have to follow like fashion. You have to follow in the footsteps that have been prepared for you by Christ Jesus. In this season, you have to know that the enemy is coming to try your identity to get you to close your mind, to get you to close your mouth, to get you to close off the man from flowing with God in a deeper dimension of his expectation of you in this season. Hallelujah. And so if it seems, this is what we came to do today. And so if it seems that you can't seem to push through, if it seems like you're the fighting, the warfare, the, the shenanigans, the cloudy, the, 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 the confusion has been hitting your life left and right. And you're like, I'm praying, I'm fasting, I'm praying, I'm fasting, I'm praying, I'm fasting. But you see that you are entering into a conversation battle with the enemy. God is saying, follow in the footsteps of Jesus. It is written. Do not show up with your own words. You ain't got to step here and be like, well, my identity is I am know who I am. I know whose I am. I no, 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 no. Stop it. Stop it. Bible only and keep it moving. What happens when we present the word? What happens when we present? For us, it's double duty. When we present the word, it becomes a twofold thing. Anything that's double in the kingdom of heaven means it is covenant. It means right now. It means lean forward. It means barely, barely. It means it's happening right now. So when we say it is written, it becomes a double duty right now covenant thing. And so when you say it is written, I'm presenting Jesus. I'm saying, you remember when that happened? Let me give you Jesus. Let me give you the word. Let him, let the blood, let the lamb, let the sacrifice, let the propitiation stand in front of me. So now here comes Christ standing in front of me. Here comes Christ. And he's reminding the enemy, listen, you're not about to happen. This ain't about to go down like this. Because in me, they live. In me, they move. And in me, they have their very being. And so as you're coming for their identity, you're really coming for me. And then when we present the word, we present the scrolls of heaven. We present the expectation of the Father. We present the word that cannot be thwarted. The testimony of Jesus Christ. Do y'all see this? So it becomes a double duty matter. Here it is. We have Jesus testifying of himself. We have Jesus testifying of his blood. It becomes a double duty thing in this season. And so it seems like God is pushing you to pray. God is pushing you to believe. God is pushing you to do what you haven't done before. God is pushing you. He won't let you rest in the place of faith. He won't let you put down your faith and go back to your belly aching ways. He won't let you go back to the place of praying small prayers. He won't let you go back. Every time you go back, the, 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 the Holy Spirit begins to shake you, but it's like the enemy won't relent. And it's got me thinking, is my prayers not working? It's got me thinking, am I not fasting enough? It's got me messing with my own identity. He's got me kind of confused about what I'm going on. And here's the thing. God is saying that's what the enemy is supposed to do. He's supposed to try to confuse you out of the place where you begin to question what I call you. You begin to question the call and you begin to question the one who created the call. Why? Because he will entrap you in the wild place. He will entrap you in a place that is supposed to be 11, 11, transition quickly. You're supposed to transition quickly. You weren't supposed to be out here long. You're not supposed to birth out here in the wilderness. You're not supposed to set up tents out here in the wilderness, but if he can get you to question what I call you, if he can get you to question the call of what he calls you, and if he can get you to question the one who created the call, the one who's calling you, then you will be going round and round and round in circles. 
Hallelujah. Can any of the plans of God be thwarted? Absolutely not. Can any of the word of the Lord be thwarted? Absolutely not. And so if it cannot be thwarted, give him Bible. Give him Jesus. Give the testimony of heaven. Give those scroll, my God. And so if you're in Psalms 32, verse 1, because we're not going to be on here long, I pray you see this very foundational. I put this up on, on, on Saturday, I think it was. And if you're, if you're not careful, it looks like this is a word for like a new Christian. It looks like it's a word, oh, we know this. Never do that. Never do that. Anytime you see um, foundational things, anytime you hear a foundational word, it, it the foundation is what holds up the structure. If there are cracks in the foundation, if the foundation is not cared for, then I don't care how big you think you're getting, how big the construct is getting, it is only going to be so sure. It's only going to be so solid. And so God would have us revisit foundational things. Hallelujah. Are y'all there? Um, I didn't got happy and now my hair just won't stay to the side. Jesus. Anyway, y'all there? Psalm 72 verse 1. And I didn't got hot. All right. A Psalm of David. Blessed is he, right? I need you to put your word, your name there. Blessed is Teresa. Blessed is Carlisle. Blessed is Shaletta. Blessed is Chastity. I need you to put your kids' names there. Blessed. That word blessed means happy. It means fortunate. It means glad hearted. If you've seen the post, you already know. That's what it means in Hebrew. Blessed means happy. And so this is where it's going to put a pin drop right here. If you say that you are, I'm blessed and highly favored. If you say that you are blessed, it means you are happy. Let's just sit there for a second. If you say you are blessed, it means you are happy. It means you are fortunate. So you cannot say I am blessed and with a scowl. You cannot say I am blessed. Stop lying. To be blessed, it means happy. It means fortunate. Jesus, I pray I'll see. That's just a side note. That's just a side note. Blessed is he whose transgression, this word transgression means revolt, it means rebellion, it means trespass, it means transgression against a nation, transgression against God. It means the punishment of transgression, all of it, right? So I need you guys to see this. In Hebrew, the picture is dualistic in many, many cases. Right. So it'll show you one picture and then behind it, it'll show you the picture that covers up the first picture. Right. So inside of one word transgression, we see revolt and we see um, a rebellion. But we also see what is tied to the, re the revolt and the rebellion. Also, the punishment, the consequence. Everything is tied to that. So it's not just the revolt by itself, but it's all of its associated consequences. <laughs> Hallelujah. Is something happening? Because I see like the numbers going crazy. Is the my internet bad or something? Anyway. Okay. So blessed is he, blessed are you, whose revolt and consequence, if you're taking notes, the consequence of your rebellion, the consequence of your revolt, the consequence of your transgression has been forgiven. This is identity. This is identity. It is written. Oh, you know you did that. Oh, you know you did that. Oh, you know you did that. Oh, how can you pray that? How can you believe that? You have no right. That's what the enemy is constantly throwing at you all day long. All day long, that's what you're thinking. Um, I, 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 my prayers aren't like that. My, no, 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 no. The revolt and the consequences of the revolt have all been forgiven. Have all been forgiven. Are y'all with me? Every sin and its associated consequence, according to Psalm 32, verse one has been forgiven. Well, what does that word forgiven mean? Are y'all ready? It means it's been carried away. It means it's been burned. It means it's been, um, um, it has been obtained. It means it has been bore. It is bored. It bore as in bear. Right. I'm trying to say it in past tense. He bore our transgressions. That makes sense. Okay. That means so when he says, um, I don't. It's, I think it may be my internet. Comcast. Y'all pray for them. Um, he bore 
our transgression. He says, hey, sister, it's right. We're seeing it again. Bore, right? The sacrifice bore. He became, he became our rebellion. Your rebellion hung on a cross. Your rebellion was buried. I need y'all to see the picture. Your rebellion, your rebellion, your rebellion is over. And the associated consequence with that rebellion was buried. Does that make sense? I pray it does. I pray it does. I pray it does. Because that means now the enemy cannot hold up pictures in front of you about all things. Amen. Thanks, Periscope. Um, about all things that that you have done that will cause you, come on, to shrink back. Because God is requiring you to jump forward. That's why sometimes it seems like nothing's moving. Because the requirement is to move forward. The requirement is not to stop. The requirement is not to war here. The requirement is to move forward and to keep moving. Right? I pray that makes sense. All right. So your revolt, your rebellion, the associated consequences have been taken. They've been carried off. He bore those things. It's over, baby. It's over. And that's a part of your identity. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. All things have passed away. And behold, all things have become new. It's right here in Psalms 32, verse 1. It's a principle. All right? Okay. Whose sin is covered. You see the B part. Whose sin is covered. This is, again, just like the word transgression, sin is dualistic in its picture. Y'all ready? It is the sin or the offense itself and the sacrifice. This word is one thing. It's the sin itself and the sacrifice for the sin. The word covered, are y'all with me? It means to cover, it means concealed. It means to be concealed as in terms of protection. It means to spread over, it means to overwhelm. So your sin and the sacrifice have both been overwhelmed. Consuming fire, right? When the priest will put the sacrifice on the altar for the sin, Jesus. And the smoke went up, the overwhelming head nod of God. Release that person from the offense. Release that nation from the offense. And so the enemy will try to come at you for your sin. And he'll also try to tell you that your sacrifice ain't enough. Your praise ain't enough. What you're doing ain't enough. You're not enough. Oh, no. According to Psalms 32, verse 1, it is finished. It is, it is over. It is finished. And so why does this matter this week? Hashtag best week ever. Why does this matter this week? This matters this week because God is saying, I need you to hear me. No, don't hear me. I need you to hear the Lord. I need you to hear the Lord. The Lord is saying, this is not the time to pull back from what you're praying. This is not the time to pull back from what I'm showing you. This is the time to press in to the prophetic that I have released over your life. Do not see the prophetic as an option. See the prophetic as the expectation. The testimony of Jesus is the expectation of, of, of God coming in your life and coming to pass. It is what must be birthed out of your life. It is what must manifest and move in your life. Is this making sense? And so the grappling, the going back and forth, the did you say it? Did you not say it? I don't know if I can do it. I don't know if that's for me. I'm so not holy. I'm so not this. I'm so not that. You are falling into the hand of the enemy. The enemy comes to kill, steal, and destroy. And if he can keep you in the wilderness, I'm telling you, this 11-day window is closing. And God is saying, the wind the wind. Come on, guys. He's pushing you through. He's saying, come on, let's go. If you can't look at yourself and believe your identity, look at me. Look to me and believe my identity. Connect. 
connect the dots of how I kept you. Go to Psalms 31 and understand that your transgressions and your rebellion, your revolt has been covered. It has been forgiven. That your sin has been overwhelmed by the propitiation, the lamb slain before the foundation of the earth. It's finished. Hallelujah. If you can't get it for yourself, if you are grappling back and forth and the enemy's throwing thoughts at you, the enemy's throwing pictures at you, the enemy's throwing words at you, you need to turn around and you need to say, it is written. It's written. The sin and the sin offering have been overwhelmed have been consumed, have been accepted. And so that means that your right, your right as being joint heir with Christ, your right, the standard and the expectation of God, the expectation of God is for you to approach him as if you are son and daughter. Hallelujah. And to receive the rights of the house and the rights of the kingdom. Seek ye first the kingdom, the ways, the reign, how it works, how it moves, how it operates. God is saying, this is that moment. Seek ye first this. Move in this first. Concentrate on this first. Focus on this first. And I got everything else. Hallelujah. And so, Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the pouring out and the outpouring of this revelation. I thank you, Father, that this revelation is secured in the bag. I thank you, God, that every competing voice that would try to come against and fight against and speak against and present another picture, hallelujah, against this word, it has to fight against you. It has to contend against you because, God, this is your word. And so, Father, I enforce as their intercessor, Psalms 32, verse 1, to begin to unfold in their atmosphere, to begin to unfold in their thinking, to begin to unfold in their words, to begin to unfold in their heart, to begin to unfold in the works of their hands. <laughs> Hallelujah. That these hands are the hands of the righteous. These hands are the hands of the harvest. These hands are the hands that whatsoever they put their hands to shall prosper. This is their season and their leaf is not withering and their fruit is giving forth in its season. And so we decree and we declare that this week, this day are moving in the season that God you have prepared for them. Every serpent, every snake, every sly thing that is trying to uh, 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 woo and seduce them in the place that you have prepared for them. I bless you, King of Glory, that that voice is shut all the way down, that they will not enter into conversation, that they will not be dismayed, that they will not be confounded, that they will not be confused, that they will not be bamboozled out of what you, God, have tailor-made for them in this season in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And so every fighting, every grappling, every wrestling, I bless you, Father, that we can enforce the sure word of God that the seed, hallelujah, of the woman, which is Christ, has bruised the head of the serpent, bruised the head of the enemy. Hallelujah. And so this week, I thank you, Father, that your people are praying grand prayers. They are praying big prayers. They are praying prayers not according to their identity, but they are decreeing and releasing prayers, sounds, and worship according to your identity. Oh, God, let us see you high and lifted up. Oh, God, let us see your, magni your magnitude. Let us see how big, how beautiful, how bold, how amazing you are. And let us concentrate and focus on that. Hallelujah. And so where identity is being called into question, we move out of the way and we position ourselves in Psalms 91. We position ourselves in Acts chapter 17. We're in the secret place. We're in the secret place, but in him we live, move, and have our very being. We're under his feathers and his pinions, but in him we live, move, and have our very being. Hallelujah. And so, Father, we take up our identity tonight. Every All 31 people, they put on their identity and it becomes armor. It becomes the helmet. It becomes the breastplate. It becomes the belt. It becomes the sword. It becomes the shield. It becomes the shoes. It becomes the armor. Hallelujah. And we will not take it off because we understand this is what is needed to move through. We are moving through. I decree that upon your feet you 
are moving through. I decree that upon your mouth you are moving through. I decree that upon your hands you are moving through. You will not get stuck. You will not squander the move of God in this season in the name of Jesus by going back and forth. Hallelujah. And so, Father, we thank you for the release of angels concerning this particular word. We thank you, God, that there are angels tied to every single verse of scripture. We thank you, God, that there are angels associated with every piece of revelation that you pour out. And so, King of glory, I thank you for the angels connected to this word. And the angels connected to the release and the manifestation of this word coming into this realm into 2019 for your people in the name of Jesus. I thank you, God, that you are releasing a wind. You are releasing a wind of revelation. You are releasing a wind, angelic host, and we bless you, God. Hallelujah. And so we agree with what you're doing. We agree with the movement of heaven. We do not fight against it. We are not in rebellion against your word. We say to you, God, in worship, in worship, in worship, not prayer, in worship, in worship, not in asking, not in, in petitioning, in worship. We say to you, none of your plans, none of your word can be thwarted. You are God. And that's our worship. And so, God, we worship you tonight, and we bless you, and we thank you, and we say to you, thank you, thank you, thank you, oh God, that our transgressions have been forgiven and our sins have been covered. That all the stuff that we did, even today, our transgressions, revolt, rebellion, forgiven, and our sins and the sin offering. Covered, covered, covered. Hallelujah. And so, Lord, we bless you. God, we honor you. Jesus, we love you. Holy Spirit, we acknowledge you. And we agree with this word, with everything in us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen, 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 amen. So I love you. It is going to be an amazing week. An amazing week, an amazing week. So we'll be on tomorrow. We're going to pray for our Cali sister, Sabine. We're going to pray for her. It's her birthday today. Um, but I'm getting ready to run over and watch uh, Dr. A as she preaches or teaches on the prophetic tonight. I love you guys. Um, please write this scripture um, pray this, put this on, don't lose it, and do not back off from what God is telling you to decree and to pray and to move in. Do not back away from your identity that God is calling you to. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. All right, guys, I love you. I love you. Happy new week, best week ever. Amen. Love you, Shante. I love you, sister. All right. <laughs>